Ladies and gentlemen, she stepped up 26 years ago. She has never lost a step in the fight. My boss, <laughs> our leader, America's conscience, Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much, Steve Israel, for your very, very generous introduction and words of uh, recognition of how important the issue of HIV and AIDS has been to our country for a very long time. I'm really honored to be here with you and with all of the people who are here to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Legally. Remember, Legally, the word and the place all begin with Long Island. <laughs> and that the people of Long Island are really Steve Israel's boss. <laughs> I'm honored to be here with uh, Laurie and Marty Scheinman. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you so much over and over again. To the Beth Page Credit Union, thank you for being such strong sponsors. The Johnson Family Fund and Foundation for their leadership. To everyone, to the board of directors, to the past and present, Jason Ryan, uh, chairs of the board, and of course, uh, to be here. You can applaud them. <laughs> and to be here with David Kilnick. Now, Steve introduced our, one of our brand newest members of Congress, Grace Meng, a new young member of Congress. And I'm so glad that she is here because Steve has made it a special point uh, to bring diversity Diversity in thinking, diversity in ethnicity, diversity in gender identification, diversity in every way you can think to the House Democratic Caucus. And he has led the way uh, in electing many more people from the LGBT community as well as those who support our agenda in that regard. We're very, very proud of uh, Congressman Jared Polis, David Cicilline, Kristen Sinema, Mark Takano, Mark Pecan, Sean Patrick Maloney, all except for the top two just elected this time, Sean Patrick Maloney, and we're proud that Tammy Baldwin has gone on to the United States Senate. I mention that, <laughs> I mention those names because, because of Steve's work and because of your support. We have in the House Democratic Caucus, 54% of our caucus are women, minorities, or LGBT community members. 54% in history of the world, it's hard to imagine. The Scheinman's heard me say this last night, uh, how, how a, parliament, a, a congressional or parliamentary body that a, one party would have that much diversity. And it's the, the diversity is our strength, the beauty is in the mix. It's not that one is better than another, it's that all coming together strengthen us and all of our caucus is very committed uh, to the LGBT agenda. And I, I want to say this because uh, Tim Bishop, who was here earlier, has been a champion on the Education and Labor Committee, fighting for all of these issues. Uh, Congresswoman Carolyn McCarthy was going to be with us, but a uh, personal matter intervened. But she, too, fighting on that committee. Because you see the big victories, LBT, the uh, 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 repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, things like that. But what happens in subcommittee and full committee is when they really come in with really dangerous amendments. 100% our House Democrats have fought those amendments under the leadership of Congressman George Miller. But, but Carolyn McCarthy and, and Tim Bishop have been stalwarts in that fight, and I know Grace Meng will be too. And I say that because I take so much pride in all of you. You know, people say to me, well, you come from San Francisco, so people are so tolerant there. No wonder you have the views you have. I said, well, tolerant is not a word that I like to tolerate. It's sort of <laughs> condescending. It's sort of condescending. I mean, it's a nice word. It's upgrade from some places people are. But in our community, it's about not being tolerant, but having respect for taking pride in our community, taking pride in our community. So with your indulgence, I would like to take pride in my House Democratic Caucus for a moment because they have enabled us to do so many things. Since I emerged into the leadership, say, a little over 10 years ago, the first question some TV uh, uh, 
moderators would ask me when I would go on, it was supposed to be a gotcha, do you support gay marriage? Now this is go back 10 or a dozen years. Do you support gay marriage? And I say, yes, I'm proud to support gay marriage. I don't support discrimination of any kind. You, you know what the answer would be. But they thought it was going to, I'd be squirming at the question, no, I'm proud of the answer. But also that they would tell the audience, see how liberal she is. <laughs> see how liberal she is. And for that over 10 year period of time, although they recognize that I do come from San Francisco and we take pride, they have never, ever said anything but thank you for leading us in that direction, this House Democratic Caucus. And Steve Israel, Steve Israel has been a very important part of that. He comes from a difficult district. He understands that all districts are not like mine. And he understands the challenges that many members face in their district. And so when he stands up front and talks about these issues, it really is just a beautiful sight to behold, and it produces the desired result. And so I'm very proud because when I was saying I supported gay marriage 10, 12 years ago, everybody hadn't fully evolved to that place uh, yet. And now we're so glad everyone has. As, uh, as um, uh, Roberta Kaplan and our distinguished uh, Ward Eady can attest, even the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court said uh, the, the, uh, our, our arguments on DOMA, people are tripping all over themselves now to support marriage equality. <laughs> But my caucus was there early on. David Kilmick, what a beautiful presentation and what a wonderful, wonderful statement of the work that you have achieved, just thinking of what it means in the lives of the people who are affected, sadly, but also joyfully in the prospects that it opens up. For 20 years of progress for young people throughout Long Island and now across New York, and that drumbeat spreading across America. For the past two decades, as we know, Legally uh, has focused on empowerment and education, on advocacy and social services, on the interests and aspirations of the LGBT, uh, LGBT youth across Nassau and Suffolk counties. And aren't we glad that we have so many distinguished elected officials here tonight to associate with these uh, pr uh, um, priorities? Chairman Jacobs, Thank you for being here again and again. It's an honor to be here with you. And again, so, so many have been, have, have been acknowledged and have been identified with the cause. You have, this organization has grown from a small, all-volunteer organization into a critical player in the fight for equality, again, across Long Island, but well, well beyond. And you've demonstrated to youth locally and nationally that the future is bright and to, a bar, to borrow your phrase it gets better. Legally's efforts have been part of a national movement for justice, uh, exemplified by our honorees tonight, Edie, oh my gosh, Edie Windsor, isn't she remarkable? A heroine to all of us. Where is she? And Roberta Kaplan, oh my, when I, Roberta Kaplan, <laughs> the most recent time I was with uh, uh, Edie was when we were at the Supreme Court for the oral arguments on DOMA and the wisdom of Roberta, Roberta Kaplan was just shining through. And I predict, Roberta, Edie, all of you, that the court will overturn DOMA. Uh, <laughs> because of your brilliance, but also because they know it is not constitutional. They've been trying to whittle and squirm around this thing. They passed it in the 90s, you know. And then in the 2000s, around 2005, they passed a bill to protect DOMA, to protect DOMA. And it said that the court would be stripped of any ability to judge the constitutionality of the so-called Defense of Marriage Act. Now, if you thought that the bill was constitutional, why would you 10 years later pass a bill depriving the court, stripping the court of the thing? So they know, they know it's not constitutional and we feel, I feel pretty certain that that will be the result. Thank you, Roberta Kaplan for your leadership. 
And Andy Stern, what a leader. I, see, I know there's a whole contingent from NARAL here. Anybody here from NARAL? Thank you, Andy, for being here, the pro-choice New York NARAL. Congratulations. Um, congratulations to Andy on receiving this award. What I love about that is the, shall we say, the coalition building that it, that it, it signifies. It reminds me, though, and Roberta can attest to this, and Evie, that when we went to the court for DOMA, we went there, and outside people were all demonstrating, and there were people who wanted to, who were there uh, because their ag ag uh, activism centered around a woman's right to choose, and there were people there because their activism centered around protecting the Voting Rights Act, and it was just a collaboration of all of the people who, as Steve said, want liberty and justice for all. It reminded me also that a few weeks before, maybe just one, a, a weeks be, uh, one or two weeks before we were on the steps of the Supreme Court advocating for the Voting Rights Act, and there were people from the LGBT community there and people from the uh, uh, reproductive freedom uh, movement there. So we've all been this in, in this together because it's about freedom, it's about life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We have that in common. And this court decision, I feel quite certain. Now, I was right on the Affordable Care Act, so I can read the, the uh, court a little bit. In any event, congratulations, Andy Stern. Congratulations, Roberta Kaplan. And, especially, and another congratulations to Edie. She is a special heroine to all of us. Um, she... <laughs> It was because of the pain, it was because of the pain that she had endured, the injustice that she had suffered, the courage that she had demonstrated, that we were there with the best possible case. And I say that because I had a case coming from my district that I thought was a pretty strong case, but Edie's was the case that would make it, make the best case for all, all of us for the cause. And, and it, even though it seemed so obvious to us, did not impress the Republicans in the Congress. Now, if I may just say a Republican word here and there. It did not impress them. They secretly spent over $3 million hiring very expensive lawyers to defend DOMA. And even after the president, bless his heart, refused to, defeat, to defend DOMA in court. So we think that when the court makes the decision, we have to move on from there, but the advocates for, for DOMA will be left in the dust, and DOMA will be left in the dustbin of history with them. When that success at the court, which I am predicting, uh, that's just one step forward, but as fight is not done. As David said, as Steve said, we have so much work to do. Uh, we have done many things, and Legal Aid has been a part of it over the past 20 years. Uh, you've opened doors and seen extraordinary progress because of you. In Congress, uh, we did some things over that time. We expanded our investments in care and treatment of Americans with HIV and AIDS. We expanded research to show the, uh, to slow the, uh, the spread of this pandemic uh, at home and abroad. We fought to eliminate discrimination against people with HIV and AIDS, which is, was a very, very big challenge early on. It's not over yet, but then it was gigantic. We laid the groundwork for President Obama uh, to reach his goal of an AIDS-free generation and remain committed now and always to finding a cure for HIV and AIDS once and for all. But David cautioned us very appropriately that much work has to be done because a new generation of young people who didn't see some of the suffering we saw a long time ago now are leading in a way we don't like them to lead as the highest percentage of new HIV uh, cases. And you know what? I just want to brag about my caucus again because I get the honors, but they really have to make the tough votes. It's not courageous for me to vote and speak out and all the rest of that. I'm proud to do it. It's who I am. It's what my district is all about. But for some of our members, it really takes courage because of 
the, the leadership they have to provide for their own districts. And so I want to brag that under the Democratic majority, we passed the fully inclusive hate crime legislation. And this was important because people said to me, you could pass the hate crimes bill any day of the week if you just take out transgenders. And I said, if I just take out transgenders, if I had one category to have in the bill, it would be transgenders. Because, because at this point, that's probably one of the groups that is the most discriminated against. But you know what? We're not making choices like that. This is fully inclusive. And our members, Barney Frank, Tammy Baldwin, all the members I mentioned earlier, some of whom were in Congress at the time, all of whom wanted this to happen, had the courage to pass that bill. For some of us, easy. For others, harder. All of them deserve uh, the credit and the uh, recognition. And don't ask, don't tell. It was so beautiful. The last bill that we saw the president sign. You know, the two bookends of his, of his uh, presidency with a Democratic majority. Ending discrimination in the workplace, Lilly Ledbetter. Ending discrimination in the military, don't ask, don't tell, repeal. Now, we have much work to do in both of those categories but really two wonderful bookends to his presidency when he had a Democratic majority. As Steve said, we've got to do a fully inclusive ENDA, and now we want to pass a, a SNDA, the Student Non-Discrimination, we say SNENDA, but we just call it the Student Non-Discrimination Act, Congressman Polis's bill that helps uh, with our young people, no young person to confront pain of bullying or harassment at their schools or anywhere in our society especially as they grow into their identity. And it legally works, works every day, day in and day out on all of this. I have one connection that I want to mention before I close, because I know I'm standing before, between you and Dinner, and Edie Windsor, and Roberta Kaplan, and Ed, Ed Stern. Uh, as a, a representative of San Francisco, uh, I take pride in one of our city's greatest connections to Long Island, a trailblazer and a champion of inequality across our country. Harvey Milk. <laughs> Harvey was born not far from here. He became a San Franciscan. He was elected uh, to, as a supervisor in San Francisco, one of the first in the nation. We thought he was the first in the nation, but then we found out that there was a lesbian super county supervisor that was elected someplace else. That didn't make us sad. We were happy about that, too. <laughs> first gay man. <laughs> when he was sworn in, uh, his victory signaled what he called a green light to all who feel disenfranchised, a green light to be more, move forward, that the doors would be open to everyone. Harvey's public service ushered in a new era of compassion and opportunity, as he said, for everyone. Of course, in California, we have a day name for him that we observe. You know, there's a stamp. It is, the, you know, this is where we take our pride. But that's what Legally has done every day. That's what Edie Windsor's case has done and will do at the Supreme Court. That's what we all must achieve together, uh, to give a green light to all, have, to all who have endured the pain of injustice and discrimination, to give a green light uh, to boys and girls who need to know that they have our love, our care, and our support to give a green light to LBGT communities who simply want the same rights and responsibilities afforded to all families. There's no time to waste, there's work to be done, but I know we can reach our goals. Um, with this leadership of David, David, where are you? The wonderful David. Where'd he go? <laughs> Kill Nick. And legally, uh, Evie Windsor, Andy Stern, Roberta Kaplan, my colleagues in Congress, our great leader of our campaign committee, Steve Israel, your representative in Congress, and, and many advocates who are here today. Uh, we will live up to the promises of our founders to build an America more fair, more just, and more equal for all. Legally, isn't that a beautiful name? Legally gay, legally proud, Thank you all very much for the award I'm going to receive and for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. Thank you so much.
Thank you all.